I feel lonely but then I think the loneliness turns into something more existential I don't know what to do with it this is going to be a pretty long topic I've been thinking a lot about the concept of friendships I think I conceptual my life in the way of I have my friendships, my relationship, and family, and career. So every other aspect of my life is slotting into place, except for friendships. And the reason why this video is going to be a long one is because I think in order to understand the concept of loneliness and how I arrived to this place of where I am at 26, you kind of have to understand the context of it. So I think for the structure of this video, what I'm going to do is I will give you the problem, my current status of life and what I'm thinking about and why I'm making this video. And then I will go into more about the backstory of how I arrived to this place. We'll go from there. Hi, my name is Flora. I am 26. I am Chinese American. So I grew up in China for 14 years of my life. And I came to the States when I was 14 years old to go to boarding school. So I spent about four to five years in boarding school and I came to New York for college. I went to the Parsons School of Design, which is an art school, and I studied integrated design with a minor in art history. And ever since post-college, I have stayed in New York. I met my husband in the winter of 2020. We got together immediately. That was during the pandemic. We moved in right away. That's kind of the general gist of my life. I'm currently living in New York City. We have two dogs and two pets. We both work from home and our lifestyle is very homebody oriented. In terms of friendship, I think that we have to kind of go back to my childhood. I grew up in Beijing with my grandparents. So my father's parents. I would live with my grandparents majority of the time and then every weekend I would see my parents. As a child, I think I was very much independent-minded. I knew what I liked, what I disliked. So I would be that kid in the group that, you know, even at five years old, I would say I love carrot cake or I love red clothing, for example, which I still do to this day. But I knew that from a very, very young age. And I think because I was so strong-minded and independent thinking, sometimes I had trouble socializing with other kids. I wasn't mean or anything to other kids, but I think I didn't learn how to give space to other people and ask questions so that others are able to speak their mind as well. A lot of the times, I think I was a lot like pushier than other kids. I would kind of say what I liked and other kids would maybe take longer to decide what they might want and I would just steer them in my direction. As a consequence, I think I didn't feel like I had a lot of equal friendships. I had people who liked me and then there are people who I liked and usually those two things don't coincide. As a consequence, I think that that actually set the tone for how I made friendships later on in life because I never got the practice I think that I would have had if I was a lot more easygoing and like was able to interact with other kids in a group setting. But anyways, when I came to the States, I think I said goodbye to a lot of my friends in middle school and saying goodbye and coming to the, the United States was a big, big transition for me. First of all, I didn't speak English. I picked up the language when I was 14 years old and I went to a school that because there were a lot of international students, I think the school was really trying to get us to learn English as fast as possible. So we were able to integrate with the other kids. So they didn't let us speak our home language in any public setting. So I would have like one or two Chinese friends who came to the States like at around the same time, but I was not able to communicate with them in the language that I was comfortable back then because the school had the rule that you weren't able to speak the language in common spaces. Now, when we went back to the dorms and stuff like that, like I would talk with my friends in Chinese, I would make a lot of Chinese friends. But over time, I also realized that I was missing out on the whole experience of learning English and coming to this country. I think around eighth grade or ninth grade, I started realizing, okay, like I have been here for about a year. I need to learn the language so that I can understand the movies that people are watching, the things that they're laughing at. 
I, there was a lot of shame. There was a lot of negative feelings around not being able to make friends in English and feeling like I was missing out on a whole experience. And that motivated me to learn. And I did spend a lot of time learning English. You know, that's kind of what got me where I am today is that feeling of like, I need to catch up. I need to not miss out on a core experience of being here in America. And once I was able to learn English slowly by 10th grade, I was pretty fluent. And this was when I went to a boarding high school. Now I was thrown into another new environment where the few friends that I have made in middle school have now dispersed into different high schools. And because of that, I had to start over again with making friends. I was thrown into a very, very competitive high school. Everybody was seemingly amazing at something. Either they were a math genius or they were super great at science or they could speak in poetry. Like everybody seemed like they had a great skill. And here I was barely speaking English and kind of had a talent for art-ish, like as far as high schoolers could see that I was good at art. So I think I suffered a lot from self-worth issues, feeling like I didn't belong, feeling like, you know, why am I here? I feel like the school made a mistake by admitting me into the school. I entered the high school in 10th grade, sophomore year. And for the entirety of sophomore year, I was feeling very low. I had a few friends that were living on the same floor as me in the dorms. We were friends to the extent that we would go to the cafeteria together, we would do homework together, but I didn't feel like there was an intense connection that I was craving. The feeling of being seen, the feeling of I can tell this person everything about my deepest, darkest secrets, basically. And I was okay with that because I was so preoccupied with other feelings of academic inferiority and just general social problems that I kind of forgot the fact that I didn't have any friends really. And by junior year of high school, I was feeling a lot better. I had a year in this very competitive school where I was able to find art to be my solace. I was very good at art. I established myself as a key person in the art program. So I felt a little bit better. I felt like somebody needed me, like the, my peers who were in my art classes really respected me and liked me. So I was able to form some social connections there. And my friend group from sophomore year kind of grew a little bit into five or six people. And by that point, I was already part of the group and I just went from place to place to place with them, but not necessarily participating in the way that I would have liked in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So thinking back high school, I had friends, but I don't think that I invested everything that I had and everything that I would give if I were in a friendship like that today. Granted, I give myself some credit, you know, back then I was a lot more preoccupied with a lot of insecurities. I was thinking about college. There were a lot on my mind and I had a boyfriend then. So it, I was just overall busy and I didn't realize how important it was to socialize and build up the skills to make friends. And then I came to New York for college. I thinking back, I don't know if college really helped me or set me back in, in terms of making friends because all of a sudden I was in a city where the school was in the middle of the city. And if you don't know about Parsons, it literally is a design school that is dispersed throughout the city. So the school has like multiple buildings across many city blocks. And I would go to school. My schedule was pretty relaxed for the most part. The classes were clustered together. So I would go to class, I would leave, I would meet the one or two people that I had met in different lectures and whatnot, like friends that I had made in other classes for lunch or coffee or something like that. And then I would go home before my evening classes, I would return to school again for that. So I didn't hang out at school the way that you would if you were to go to a traditional college with a campus. I would dip in and out, like sometimes I would go shopping in the middle of the day or like go to a museum in the middle of the day between classes. So the pros of city living and going to school in the city is that you get to have experiences outside of just college classes and i did have a lot of enriching activities that way but the negative part is also because you're not spending all this time 
with these people from class to class to class and having to hang out on campus or doing activities like going to a football game or something like that, you lose out on the opportunity to make friends in a non-academic setting the way you would think that you can make friends at college in a communal setting. So like in the cafeteria or in the lounge, but people would hang out in the cafeteria. The school did have a cafeteria, but more often than not, people just kind of went back to their rooms or went back to their apartments and kind of did their own thing. So like in order to hang out with people, you have to consciously know who you're going to hang out with and make plans with them outside of classes. So it took additional effort that I think thinking back, I did not fully take advantage of. Now I think, is when my current life stage i think kind of started so back in 2020 was also the year that i finished my last semester of school i met my husband in college during the whole zoom class pandemic era i met him in my last semester of class we connected and afterwards we became friends and very very quickly started dating which is a whole other story that i'll get into maybe another time if you guys are interested the story of how we met but basically i went from college to being in a super committed relationship like very like almost like a streamline from one to another and i think when i got into my current relationship back then was my he was my boyfriend a lot of people were very shocked by how committed and how intense our relationship was because it was during the pandemic we hung out 25-8 for multiple months before the world started to open up again and we would spend every single living breathing minute together and not even be able to go out that much so as a consequence i think we really developed the kind of relationship where we get to see each other in every single scenario and we have grown to like each other throughout all these scenarios and I invested a lot of time and energy in my relationship back then and as a consequence I think I just slowly grew apart from a lot of my friends who were single at the time thinking back it's not a unnatural part of how things went I think I was very involved in my relationship and maybe as a consequence I wasn't asking as many questions to the people that I was hanging out with back then and maybe alienated them or it could have just been that the things that we had overlapped became less and less and we just ran out of things to talk about over time but one way or another I think I grew apart from a lot of my friends that I had back then which was a pain point for me because I felt like I tried really really hard to not become one of those people who get in a relationship and immediately like ghosts all her friends I did not ghost my friends as a very natural part of the course of you know how things went down we grew apart I still talk to them from time to time but it's not it's never been the same as when we were all single and hanging out together so I think that element became like a missing piece that I didn't know how to reconcile with and then we very quickly got engaged and got married and now that I find myself at 26 I don't have children yet and I'm feeling very lonely most of the time I think this loneliness feels very different than when I was single because back then when I was single I was looking to share a reality with someone I was looking to share an activity together with someone feeling like I had company but today I have that I have you know my husband he and i have a lot of the same interests and very similar ways of thinking so i do enjoy his company and i feel like the togetherness that i get from being with him but then i think the loneliness turns into something more existential like an existential loneliness and isolation the feeling of like and i'm about to get a little bit deep in here but i think it's the feeling of i exist in this world alone and someday i will die alone like it sounds very dramatic and almost like a little doom and gloom but in the day-to-day -day experience of existential loneliness i think i feel more like huh interesting this is the way i feel and i don't know what to do with it and i think that modern society tells women that you know there's this narrative of have happily ever after at the end of the storybook 
you know, he kisses her or he proposes to her and they get married and it's happily ever after and nobody knows what happens after that nobody talks about it and I think that that's like the interesting part because I do think I got my happily ever after in a lot of ways I am so happy with my marriage and every day we work really really hard to keep this marriage strong and keep our bond strong but at the same time, you know, in the storybooks, you never know who the princess's best friend is. Like, does she have a friend group? You don't hear about that. And I'm experiencing that of like, okay, like I have a very happy marriage and I have a great life for the most part, except for this like little slim piece of friendship and community that I feel like, you know, who are my people? Where's my community? And this is the interesting part is I think I was looking for friends for a very, very long time thinking that my social skills need work and I think that I tried to take action because I thought it was definitely my fault that I somehow became rusty in my friendship making skills and my social skills and I needed to put myself out there which is, you know, a lot of the advice that people tell you you need friends you don't know how to make friends and making friends as an adult is hard so you have to put yourself in scenarios where you can meet other like-minded people to become friends with them and that that is the advice right so i really much very much thought okay i need to practice my social skills i even put it in my new year's resolution you know i'll link the video here like it's public record i said that i was going to practice social skills and I think that to an extent, practicing social skills is always a great thing. But after, you know, trying to join different groups, trying to join hangouts of friends of friends and meeting, you know, mutual friends that way, and even trying to join online groups and going to, you know, in real life hangout, I just felt like these socialization scenarios and these outings are great as one-offs like the going to someone's birthday party or going to someone's like picnic is a great thing in and of itself but it has nothing to do with like what i was looking for it almost felt like two separate things i would leave these hangouts like super happy like i was very fulfilled for that day like i fulfilled my socialization quota if you will but in the long run i didn't feel like i took anything away from it that was consistent I also hang, hung out, like tried the strategy of finding different people that I clicked with in those big group scenarios and inviting them to more of a intimate setting, like a one-on-one -on -one coffee chat. And I would do like continuous coffee chats with a couple people. And again, they were just that, they were enjoyable coffee chats, but I wasn't able to push it any further. And I also realized that that is not exactly what I was looking for either. And I started introspecting and thinking about like the whole thing of everything that I've tried. And I realized that the common thread is me. There must be something that I'm not doing correctly. And you know, if you meet me on the streets, I am a very like extroverted friendly person. I am very much a believer in asking questions and getting to know people. So I don't think I'm a difficult person to have a conversation with. And then I started thinking, okay, what if the question that the problem that I've been trying to solve all along is not the real issue? And here I am, you know, after a lot of thinking and a lot of journaling, I realized that I was looking not for friendship, but for a community. Stay with me there. I think there is a difference. I think that at least to me, Friendship is predicated on mutual respect and affection for each other. So you guys can live very different lives, but as long as you have something you respect of the other person, whether it's like the way they live life or their character, and they have that for you and you guys have like that affection for each other, that that is your friend. So you don't have to live the same type of life. You don't even have the same like type of values. You don't have to have that. But for me, a community is based on core values, is based on people who have similar goals, who have similar beliefs, and who have similar, I wanna say faith, but it's not even, it doesn't have to be religious because I'm not religious, but it's almost like the faith in life, the belief in life. 
I'm not gonna lie, like at times I really wish that I grew up in a ritual based like religious community because that is something, a belief that you can grow up with and that you can have a community of people and that no matter where you go, you can very easily find the group of people who believe in the same things in life as you do. And because I'm not religious, it becomes a lot harder to have to kind of meet people and like get to know each other and then slowly convey core values and things that we value in life to each other and by that point like that might be your friend you know like you might realize that you guys have different core values but you still respect and have affection for each other and that eff effectively becomes my friend but the sense of belonging that i'm looking for rests in core values and it's not something that people write on their faces so it's a lot harder to find and ironically that is exactly why I started YouTube because I realized that if I take this first step I put myself out there and I kind of showcase my core values as it were as if you see you know a lot of my vlogs like one of my biggest core values is introspection and leading life with the intention that I want to be a good person and I believe that every day I can improve and that I have to think about think about thinking you know, for lack of a better word, that I need to be super aware of the things I'm saying, the things I'm doing, the thoughts I have to myself, because these are all the things that make up the reality of my situation. And YouTube becomes that because I am taking the first step in showcasing and telling you about the way I live my life. And I am documenting that in the style of a vlog or in these like talking style videos where, you know, I hope in this video, you've already learned so much about my past, my experiences and my core values. And that if you feel like you resonate with this, you could like, comment, you know, subscribe to my channel and we can start a dialogue that way. So I feel like YouTube is the first solve to the real issue of me trying to find and build a community. And a lot of my core values rests in the way of life. I believe in honesty. I believe in being authentic in the way of, you know, I think that authenticity is not something you can really try to do in an external way. You either are or you aren't. And if you want to be more authentic, the work rests within. Because I think so many of my YouTube videos and even thus far in my couple months of YouTube journey, the thing I struggle with the most is insecurity is myself like i am my biggest roadblock and i knew that from the very start and i think youtube has helped me tremendously in overcoming because identity is iteration you iterate your identity of being authentic by being raw and honest to the camera every single time you pull it out so that's what I'm attempting to do here. I am really, really trying to build a community. And you know, people say building a community. And to me, that means building a community of people that have the same core values and the same way of life. And I feel like so blessed every day when I see a new subscriber, when I see someone leaving a comment, because that is reaffirming the feeling that I am not alone in this. And yeah, I think for the future, I am also trying to further my physical communities as well because I think that physical interaction is always super important. I'm not really sure like how to go about that yet. Like I've tried a lot of activity-based communities, but that hasn't really gotten me anywhere like book clubs or, you know, groups based on interests. So if you guys have any suggestions like based on your own experience, please let me know. I would love to take action on some of these and maybe further some of my real life physical communities as well. And I really, really, really want to know what your experience has been making friends and searching for community. If you think that friendship and community are the same, they go hand in hand and what your struggles might have been and what your successes might have been in these arenas because i think that by making this video my purpose is to find other like-minded people and hopefully help others who might be in a similar situation to feel less alone i really enjoyed making this video it feels really cathartic and i'm excited to make more of these um talking style videos because i think that this is a very straightforward and honest way for me 
to communicate with you on some of the things that I hold very near and dear to my heart. And I feel incredibly vulnerable in a good way. So thank you for allowing me the space to say my piece. I appreciate you.